Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. So, as Nigerians, we've heard different stories of friends and family members who have gone into our hospitals for routine procedures or for minor medical conditions, and the next thing you hear that it passed away. Sadly, this recently happened to one of our staff's brother. Um, on the show today, we have the widow of our, of our, 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 our colleague's brother, who's here to tell us exactly what happened. But before we speak to her, I'd like you to watch this clip of one of our colleagues from um, News did, a, did a, um, a, a short documentary on what happened. Watch this. It was 4 a.m. on the 2nd of January, just one day after the breaking of the dawn of the new year 2020. Kennedy Oseni Akidima, a 42-year-old University of Lagos graduate and a member of the Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries, woke up his wife with a complaint of difficulty in breathing. He was an asthmatic patient. After calling the doctor ahead, his wife linked up with a neighbor to get him to the private hospital he sometimes used. According to her, he was put on oxygen immediately he got to the private hospital. But the oxygen finished and that led to him being eventually moved to the general hospital Ikorodu. At about 8.30 a.m., where the drama that eventually led to his death began. I was just saying that we are tend to him, that we are tend to him. Before I go back again, nobody's with my husband. I should go and collect God. I should go and collect food. All these things take for a while. At the end of the day, I go here. That's he has given up. His camera shy neighbors spoke with TVC News with the one who accompanied his wife speaking first. We entered and we were shouting that please they should bring oxygen, they should bring oxygen. They were just shouting, they've called the technician to come and give him oxygen. I was like, is it the technician that will give him oxygen or the, uh, what was it called, the auxiliary nurses that are there that are supposed to fix him up or even they're supposed to be a standby doctor that will attend to emergency cases. Very nice man. Very peaceful man. I really want the government to ensure people are promptly attended to during emergencies. His widow, Victoria Akidema, a preschool teacher, now left with three kids between the ages of 10 and 4 and a widowed mother to care for, believes that if her husband was promptly and compassionately attended to, for the two hours he was at the general hospital gasping for breath, he would have survived. Adi been they have attended to us from the car. You know this is between life and death. How will you be telling me to go and be looking for card? Folder. Before you can save a life. With these allegations made, TVC News headed for the General Hospital Ikorodu to hear the side of the hospital's management. We met the relatives of some patients who were also complaining. As my husband is having complaint, I was telling them that this man is having complaint, he's having inching in his tummy. I was telling them that they should come and attend to him. They did not answer me. No one of them answered me. Instead of that, they were making jest of me. The chief medical director, Fumi Bankole, said she would not be able to talk to us on camera due to civil service rules that she must obey. Speaking of camera, she said investigations have begun. She also advised patients and relatives who come into the hospital at any time to take note of the hotlines to make complaints promptly if they sense any form of poor handling. I don't know. I don't but back in the home of the Akedemas, the pain from the sad loss is still very deep. These lovely children have been rendered fatherless. Their mother is a preschool teacher earning so little. One good Nigerian with potentials has gone again. The very strong reason why the government must address speedily inadequacies in the health sector. Jacqueline Ogo, TVC News, Lagos. Join us on the show 
is the wife of the deceased, Victoria Akedema. Welcome, madam. Yes, ma'am. Okay, obviously. So, um, this is a very difficult interview to have because um, I understand your pain and I feel your pain. Um, you see, we talk about issue of medical negligence in this country every day on this table. That's the story of our country. And until you put a face to these things, it's almost as if our leaders don't understand what we are going through on the daily. If you can, just give us a recap very quickly what happened that day leading up to the death of your husband. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. We were referred to the general hospital around there, <coughs> but at around seven o'clock or so. There was nothing like traffic on the road, so we got there immediately around the seven after seven, calling for help that they should please. It's an emergency case that my husband is an asthmatic patient that he needs help. Do you have help. an inhaler? Yes. He has an inhaler, but it wasn't working. Okay. Mm -hmm. So getting to the hospital, we are like shouting the, 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 the gate was locked as the emergency uh, gate. That's well, the general the, hospital or the yes, hospital? Yes, okay. the general hospital. Okay. The emergency gate was locked. Okay. I was pulling it. What time was this? Around after seven. The morning? Uh, yes, okay. to eight. Yes. I knelt down, pulling the gate. Madam, go away. I said, please, my husband is in the car. Please help me out. That is, is a... Uh, he needs air, he needs oxygen. Please help me out. Or they could say that we should wait. They went in to call one of their medical person. The person came out and as she was coming in, he said, no bed, nothing. Can I? I said, please, even though it's a chair, it can easily rest his back and you can give the oxygen. All it needs now is oxygen. We have tried all we could. They say hey, they should bring in the patient. The, 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 the person that helped me carry him took him in and they, they lay him on a bed that is not well supported. We have to use our hand okay. to support the, okay. the bed. Wow. What next? You said uh, you are coming. That we, what have, have, have we been looking at that it got to this stage? I was like, no, please. We have been on one treatment before, and uh, something happened. That is why we are referred down here. Please help save this life, please. My husband was like, please help me. Oh, they could say that I should go and get scared. I should go and get food. I said, at this time, Please do something just to help him out. All they could use is one nebulizer beside that bed. And you know, before you even put a nebulizer, there should be a substance yeah. that you put. There was nothing like that. All they could do is to put <laughs> the empty nebulizer mm. on him. Okay. And they asked me, and they were like, I should go. I should go and get the food and the card. I got the card. They still asked me to go and get the food. I went there, pleading that they should please help out. I gave them 1,000 naira. I said they did not have change, that the food is 500. I said, please, okay. take the 1,000 naira and let me. Yeah, I, 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 I know this is a difficult thing to do. Um, I want us to take our steps back a bit because we know that general hospitals always complain that they bring in the patient when he's, when he's almost at the point that they can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. I'd like you to take us a step back to when it happened at, in, in, in your house. Yeah. We took it first to a private hospital. Yeah. Did you have, a, did you have a, an inhaler in the house? Yes, yes, it was with him. So the private hospital actually started administering the oxygen. Oxygen. But unfortunately, yeah. it had finished. It's and finished. then they referred you to the general to hospital. To the general hospital. Okay, so that is what happened. Yes. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask, you know, the fact that you got there and the gate was locked, were they on strike? Is it not supposed to be running for 24 hours? I just don't know. 
the sure. gate was just locked, the emergency case, gate, not the entrance gate. Okay, the emergency. The emergency gate was locked. Mm. And they didn't give you any reasons why? No, people were outside there shouting. The other, Even interestingly, some. and in fact, not interestingly, sadly, mm. the young lady who was interviewed at the hospital in the video, and I'll probably show that clip again, her husband died 24 hours after. <laughs> Same thing. Mm. And she's actually related to another cameraman in, in the studio. Mm. Oh. So it was really, really a painful situation where it's so close to home. She was interviewed at, because we saw her there and uh, Jacqueline interviewed her. And she was there because of her husband. And 24 hours later, her husband also died. And this happened at the Korodu General Hospital. Now, we bring these stories to the fore because it's important that people, like, leaders know what we are going through. Mm. And obviously, I know you are hurting right now. You're mourning and you definitely want justice. Mm. And that's why we brought you on because we demand justice. I'd like you, Mariam, to say if you, to, to, to come in at this point. I'm, I'm really sorry for your loss now. Okay. You know, there's nothing to say to her. One way or the other, one of us has experienced this uh, oh, relative. Just, just you know, I remember my um, late mother in law ended up at Luth and, you know, circumstances too. She was rushed from the private hospital because the uh, doctor there believed actually that the consultants would be better able to treat what she was, you know, what she had and the way at the general hospital. And I remember her being in the emergency, sitting in a wheelchair. She had clots and she had to have her feet elevated. So they quickly rushed her there. They knew that that was her, her situation, but they left her sitting in that wheelchair for hours. So I have heard these sort of stories many times and many times over. And, you know, apart from lamenting, what, what, what can we do? You know, the Minister for Health, the CMDs of all these um, hospitals, the doctors, the nurses. I just came back with my daughter, so I know that they put in the work, but there's a system of operation, the, 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 the administration of it, everything is so scattered. There are various you, levels. Yes, I know. See, and you go to the hospital, your child is about to do something, you have to go upstairs, downstairs, round around to get yeah, a card, to yeah. come back to, you know, everything is just scattered. The standard is horrible. But the thing is, we'll just keep talking. Somebody needs to do something. We need yeah. to help ourselves as well. I, I really yeah. don't know what to say. I mean, uh, yeah, so I was in the same shoe um, just last month. Um, I was on a job somewhere in the Kenya and I went into a crisis. I'm also asthmatic and I'd used my inhaler. It didn't work and I was rushed to the um, <coughs> teaching hospital there. And while my, um, you know, my hosts were trying to get me, they got a wheelchair and tried to wheel me in. The doctors and other med medical personnel were fighting them for, you know, taking laws into their hands by getting a wheelchair to wheel me in. And of course, they even stopped us for another 30 minutes. Get the, if you don't get a car, they won't attend to me. She's a guest here. She's not even, you know, but they insisted they had followed the process. Mm -hmm. So I can I relate understand. totally with what okay, she just said. So narrated. we also reached out to the hospital authority. Okay. And according to them, they said they are still investigating the matter. And they asked us to call the numbers on the screen that uh, I think Jacqueline picked up those numbers and um, that we make an official complaint. But on this matter, they're still investigating. Uh, Madam Victoria, I'd like to ask you, I mean, I know you offered to come on the show. What exactly would you like the government to do to at do. this point? To see, I, I'm left with three children. I don't know where I, I can even start from. Just to see me through, I may be the holder. Mm. My children are still small. And this, my husband is a realtor. He's the one, most He's of the thing. I'm just a preschool teacher. Right. My husband help. Now I'm left with nothing. Mm. Even my widow, my mother is a widow. So my brothers are there. Mm. Don't just to know how they could help out. Mm. You see, this story what, is so what, close okay. to home because mm. your husband, I mean, your husband's brother works here. And even the lady in the, in the, in the other video, uh, her husband's brother also works here. So I totally, that, that's one of the reasons why we had to bring up because it's so close to home. And mm. we know how painful, um, uh, that's the woman I was talking about on the screen. So we, we were on, the, the, this poor lady now lost her husband. But let me take this call. I think the call's been waiting for a while. Good morning, are you there? Yes. Yes, sir. Go ahead, please. 
Thank you very much, Tony. You see, so, just yeah, as you I, I, I would have expected that um, the hospital would give a statement as to why they have an empty nebulizer. A hospital as be a general hospital for that matter yeah, that because be. when things happen in the private hospitals those are the places you refer the people to because they are supposed to be the best well the most qualified to handle such issues so why would they equipped you know and then we have um, uh, um, our leader saying that they they equip the hospitals they provide infrastructure mm -hmm. and they have an empty nebulizer they should be called out for it we need to hear, get a statement on why they have an empty nebulizer in a huge hospital like that. I have a call from Maurice. Maurice, are you there? Yes, I am. Thanks for calling. Go ahead, please. Good morning. Good morning. You know, this uh, story that you guys are uh, um, relaying now is so sad. But well, fortunately, that is just the way we are. But I'd like to situate it uh, at the poor view of the workers, the people who work, the medical officers, the nurses, uh, what have you, at the hospitals. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times, these people have, they are supposed to do what they are supposed to do. They know it, but they just refuse to do it. I had a situation okay. last month, December. I had the access, and it was so painful. And I, I could barely walk. I went to Ifako, the general hospital here, to, to receive treatment. But if they, they saw the situation I was, they told me to go and get card. I went there, I got the card, back to an agency, they said I should go back and get food. Now they said I have, they had to bring my folder. They did it. I went back to the registry, they said I should, they, they, those people have to come and get their folder themselves. I, so I kept going back and forth, I was tired. Until I saw a number on the wall, and I called the medical director. It was then, the, the man couldn't hear me because the network was bad. He asked me to come upstairs, describe his office to me. I went there and I spoke to him. The man was fantastic. And he sent somebody with me to them. It was there that eventually they brought out the folder and they took me there. It's just, I, just, I think that it is the people, the way we, uh, we are as a people. We just don't know how to empathize or right. do our job. With, all right, let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue this conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Healthy Tuesday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Mariah Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies of Your View. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Hello, How are you guys doing? Let me start with since I know more a new person. I will start with you. Hi, <laughs> do Mariam. 
You've been so religious about this stuff. Oh, yes. I, I, I always forget to In use remembrance of our yeah. heroes, you yeah. know, and, um, armed I'm forces. forces. Oh. Yes, I've been religious about it. Someone even stopped me yesterday and asked me if I was an army wife. Yeah. My child said, my children, no, she's a TV presenter. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, Maya? I'm fine. I wanted to say, even though I enjoyed just and everything, I think we need to call the aviation industry, the sector. We need to sit with them. Two things happened. When my kids were going to church, they traveled with my sister. Mm. So, of course, she's not their biological parent. And we did, like, all the affidavits to show that she's allowed to travel with them. She was not checked. Whoa. They just took her, her ID card. And she traveled with the kids. And I'm like, hmm. hmm. Imagine somebody else You know all kids. the stories of um, people Nothing. who traffic children. Traffic. Could this be what That's it is? That's how it happens. And when we're coming back, there was a mistake for my daughter's name as well. So we had to do another paper. They didn't ask. They just, oh, yeah. uh, so hi. we need to do that. Yeah. Then my flight from just to Lagos was, from, <coughs> was for 12. I didn't get to Lagos to 8 p.m. What happened? I was in just... And then they told us that had, um, by 12, we had nothing. Then around 1.30, they said we've been delayed for two hours. Mm -hmm. Then we got, by the time we came, it was about 4 p.m., past 4. We got to Kaduna first, then we came to Lagos. Mm -hmm. When we got the to kids. Lagos, we could not land. land. They said somebody, they had blocked the runway. Somebody important was either flying in or flying out. Hey, so whoa. we were flying in and hovering. Were you praying? Oh. My sister, everybody. <laughs> and it was a flight filled with many parents and kids because children were oh, coming home oh. for yeah, school. Yeah. It was really scary. scary. Uh, we so need I to feel do that better. we need to find out, what talk is, to them, yeah. explain how, to how us. How they've yeah. been regulated, how they've monitored mm -hmm. maintenance and all that. It's yeah. important. Even yeah. customer service. Exactly. Mm -hmm. How are you doing, my dear? I'm doing amazing. So um, I was listening to one TED Talk stuff this morning on my way. Now I have a driver, so I can actually chill with my ah. phone ah. while I'm coming to work. Ah. <laughs> so and um, one of the new researches is the fact that uh, for you to be able to last long, live long, uh, aside from the fact that you have to take care of your diet, take care of your exercises, it's very important that there were two factors that were above, which is one, your network, your tribe, what I call your tribe, those people you can easily reach out to when you need to get a loan, when you're problem your family that your support system is very important people who have that tend to last long and your social interactions as well the friends you have the people around you how you relate to people so I think it's something we should be conscious about how do we relate to people how do we get people into who's our your space tribe? you know who's your tribe find your tribe really okay the tribe thing <laughs> fantastic how are you doing Amina very well, thank you. Um, a little bit unstable thanks to the traffic that I experienced oh, this morning. Sorry, we used to, we know what to do. We kind of planned the <laughs> time. You know, that's not my normal route, route so yeah. it, was, it was, it hit me really hard. And yeah. I sat for 15 minutes, stand still, ah. and I kept on thinking, what's going on? And time just, <laughs> you know, you're seeing the time yeah. ticking and, you know, talking about relationships beyond your inner tribe, I think everyone should adopt this um, live and let live. Mm. Be kind. You don't know when next you'll meet me. Yeah. It's me needing your help now. You'll need my help down the exactly. line. And you really don't know. Yeah. And so while I was trying to find a place to park my car, um, I approached the security guard. And the first person that attended to me was ready to help. And then he spoke to his boss, and his boss declined. Mm. And then somebody else came out and was trying to intervene. And so two people let me, but this boss insisted no. And eventually they wrapped him up and said, let her, yeah, it, yeah. she's, she's going on air. She's, ah. you know, she's pressed for time. And then I smiled at it too. I said, God bless you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, and then they said, no, 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 you should. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Well, really. <laughs> well, it's good to have you back on the show. Yeah, nice yeah, to thank meet you, you so Amina. Much. Yeah, yeah, same here. How was the feedback yes. from the last time on the show? Um, Save for one person that was not very kind to me on social media. There was a lot of oh, good feedback. Yeah. So yeah. 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 We used yeah. to, yeah. We used to yeah. yeah. Mima said that. I said, yeah. Amina. Welcome to our world. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the well, comfort zone because being an Islamic yeah. OEP, I think everybody's just generally careful with yeah. it. So I really didn't have that um, right. backlash. It's but yeah, it's all good. You'll get used to it. Okay, yeah. let's go on a quick break now. When we come back, we'll go through the front pages of the news. People stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're going to start with The Nation. 7.5% VAT kicks off as Buhari signs finance bill. Operation Amotekun with fulfillment of people's yearnings, says Shoyinka. Abdurazak seeks Buhari supports for Kwara. Supreme Court halts proceedings over Justice Ill Health. 
Nigerian lady rescued from Lebanon slavery. Go on to tell me, and you are one against another civil war. And Dangote renews bid to buy Arsenal. Right, let's talk about this Nigerian lady. I know I saw with them. Um, yes, it was them. Um, there was a viral video where she talked about the fact that um, she was kid uh, she was um, trafficked to Lebanon under the guise of uh, going to be an English teacher to right. the kids in that place in Beirut, exactly. But then she got there and the uh, owner or the person who bought her told her you've been bought, took her passport, seized her phones and everything, and uh, was trying to you know have sexual relations with her over time, but she refused. So anytime he goes out. He she sneaks to the phone. That was the reason we saw the viral video. But thankfully, she has been uh, rescued. She's been handed over to the Nigerian um, embassy in Beirut. Right. Um, the Abike Dabiri is on the case already. And also, we had um, about 137 trafficked Nigerians, uh, Ghanaians, and other African countries in um, Ivory Coast rescued already. Their police is really That's out right. to get Fantastic. all of those trafficked children. I saw the tweet yesterday sorry. from um, Abike Dabiri. Yeah. Okay, so so my confusion is, what is trafficking exactly? Are you aware that you're being trafficked? Or when you get there, then you're used for something different, and yes. then that makes you trafficked? So it, there's yes. a network, obviously, yes. and they, they use different guises mm. to bring people over. So the moment you are going there, well, there she, was, she thought she was going to go and teach. Yeah. Yes. To work. But she was, was, she was um, misguided, and she was actually tricked to come over there. So that once you're being tricked, you're being trafficked. Mm -hmm. so once and they knew, sell you off. And they sell you yeah. off. So okay. that's um, what yeah, happened. Yeah, so there's a... The other uh, story? No, yes, one, one more story yeah. from China. Our federal government is asking us to be careful that there's an outbreak of a uh, uh, disease oh, called novel yeah. cor coronavirus from mm. China. Novel coronavirus. So it's like a family of viruses and causes all sorts of illness like shortness of breath to kidney failure and death. And it's especially in Wuha in China. And mm. a lot of Nigerians we know travel to China, China back and forth mm. for business. And so yes. they're asking us to be careful. And right. those who do travel there when they get to Nigeria yeah. have to um, check, check with the it. health facility okay. before they come. And our there. dear uncle, our, your view, uncle, your view, Lilith of your view's uncle has yes. said that um, <laughs> he doesn't he's going know to buy <laughs> he knows. Arsenal once he's done with the project refinery that he's working in Lagos State. Wow. So once uncle is done, he says he would definitely buy this Arsenal. His uncle does not know us. <laughs> our dear we are our dear uncle. uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the point. That's Elijah Dan Kuti for those who don't know. <laughs> the punch. Private sector knocks federal government as Buhari signs finance bill. Domestic worker commits suicide weeks a week before planned visit to parents. Clubbing kinks don't deserve any respect, says Alafi. No decision yet on Okada and Kekemara, says Lagos. Four naval men on rescue mission killed in Ondo. And SIM card, man sues Buhari's daughter. DSS demands 500 mil million naira. I think we should start with the suicide story and then we'll take the Buhari story. Mm -hmm. What happened with this young lady? Okay, so this um, lady who worked with a family here in Lagos State, um, originally from Kotonu, Benin Republic, she's been with them for two years. And on this particular day, they had knocked on her door several times. The day before, she had gone out mm. and they hadn't seen her. And she arrived in the morning and they were asking her where she had been. She quickly ran into one of the toilets. Where have you been? What? Quiet. Anyway, it was time for her to get ready to go to the shop because she also stays at the shop. And they banged on the door several times. She didn't open. They opened the door. They find her lying down with the foamy substance coming out mm. of her mouth and a bottle of DD force. I don't know if you know it's a pesticide. They use it to kill like mm. cockroaches around the house. It's very potent. I mean, the smell is quite strong. So also they, saw, they smelled it when they went in. She was rushed to the hospital in the process of reviving her. She died. Mm. Um, the family said that it's not the first time she had tried it. That's her own original family. Mm. The family she was staying with were able to pay for all the mm, um, medical there, yeah. fees and also take her home and so pay her So we know clearly that it was actually a suicide. Yes, yeah, so it was a suicide. Then this issue, a man suing um, Hanan Buhari, what, I read that story. Yes. And he bought a SIM, an MTN SIM. Mm -hmm. okay. And then, obviously, when he started, I mean, activated it, they now found out that, um, I think DSS picked it up, mm -hmm. that that was former, uh, that uh, Hanan Buhari's former number. 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 Yeah. Okay. And then he was arrested. Mm -hmm. And he tried to prove that he bought this seed. Unfortunately, he was detained. Hmm. And then, yeah, go ahead. Man. Yeah, so he was detained since July. Oh, my Last God. Year. Yes, and until September before he was released. He showed them the receipt for the SIM card. He showed them everything that comes with yeah. the SIM card. But he was still held on because they said they were waiting for Hanan to finish school. 
yeah. before she could come to and verify. let him to verify and then he would be let go and she no. never no. did that. So now he's suing yeah. and he's demanding for 500 million naira because obviously that's a totally... Um, Wasted yeah. his so he's, he's suing Hanan, he's yes. suing DSS and he's suing MTN yes. yeah. for aggravated... Totally, uh, yeah. totally. That's fact, so this, this, he might actually get... get yeah, even know. if he doesn't get 500 million, she'll get, get something. something. Yeah. Yeah. Totally wrong. That was totally, totally wrong. Uh, any other story? Let's move on. Officer? Okay, go ahead. Very quickly. Okay, so um, think about pirate pirates in uh, Undo village killed about four naval officers. These officers were on duty while they were trying to rescue foreigners that were kidnapped. Mm. So they killed them. They took their munitions, mm. and um, the um, the chief of the naval is uh, saying already that the, the they've caught one person, and the person said that the ammunitions that were stolen it's with the community so mm. they are giving them ultimatum to fish out the mm. you know or else the community will be in trouble so okay. investigation on, the leaders were actually in the know yeah. Mm. yeah moving on very quickly to daily sun supreme court increases ihid dioha tambola's anxiety efc arrests eight suspected internet fraudsters in ibadan um, church accountant jailed 18 years for embezzling tithes and offerings and uh, 50 years after Civil War, showing Kakinto Utomi, others insist on restructuring. Let's take the major headline. The, the justice has said that, um, that actually what happened, there was, supposed to, there was supposed to be a hearing yesterday to know the fate of these, um, the, the governor, Dangude, Ganduje, Lalong, Mohammed, and others. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, one of the judges fell ill and they postponed it to today. So, um, so I mean, the, judge, the, 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 the court was full of people, and they actually thought that they would get a judgment yesterday, but they didn't. So waiting for today. Let's talk about the e um, EFCC arresting eight suspected internet fraudsters. Yes, in so the what EFCC got an intelligence report about uh, some internet fraudsters, and they were able to pick up eight of them. They got all their exotic cars, their laptops, and all those, their gadgets. So um, they are saying that if um, the investigations are ongoing, once they are... When it's w once it's being certain that they're actually fraudsters, they will take them to court. So that's just you know we always make some names. Let me let me just okay, let me not call you them. You want to call them out? I was going to call <laughs> them out because we, we usually do in the back, but it's yeah. important that. Um, but these are still suspects. Yes, yes. suspects. Okay. Yes. Moving on to Vanguard. Fifty years after, let's revisit issues that caused civil war. Okay. CS Gowon Shoyinka, Anya Utomi, and Akitoye. Use of presidential jet. I can't wait to have another project. Says Hanan Buhari. 15% of cancer deaths in West Africa are from Nigeria, says Oshimbaju. Hmm. Um, Customs shot at least 163,000 from 823,000 applicants. 7.5% VAT regime kicks off as Buhari signs financial bill. Amotekun, a pleasant gift to Southwest, says Shoyinka. Let's start with the civil war story. Who has that? I have the story. So w what I was expecting was like more like a framework on what they expected us to do. So they just came together and they are giving us stories. I want to mention the people who were involved. No, was it the members though? Yes, the members. I know. And they were giving us stories on how we should try as much as possible to avoid the civil war. You know, we have to take care of all the problems that we're having, the um, um, political challenges, economic challenges that's plaguing our country at the moment. So with these bunch of elder statesmen, I expected them to have given us like an outline of what they expected us to do mm. exactly. They just talked about patriotism. We can't stand to see, event, but to see civil war anymore. Any country that <laughs> sees civil war twice will not survive and all of that. But they did. I, w I read till the end of the article thinking that they would have said, okay, go this, this way and go do. that way <laughs> and get this result. No, but it was get more that talk, talk oh, shop, talk shop. Kind yeah, of but that. I'm happy that people are there. We see it's important these elder statesmen speak because people are, there are drums of there are, there are various drums are here in drums of war here, left, right, and center. So when you hear people like this speak, mm. remember, they are the ones that have experienced the, the civil, civil war. war. They know what happened. That's Those true. of you saying you want this, you, they are looking you for blood. You, you, have, you, you have not experienced war. Mm -hmm. And so they're telling you, listen, let us do everything to ensure Unity. you don't go back to what happened 50 years ago. Moving on very quickly, we don't talk about VATU. She yeah. is okay, ready. So I was going for it too. <laughs> yeah, go, go ahead, please. Uh, so the, the finance bill has been signed, thankfully. A lot of people have, uh, there's a bit of misconceptions around it because most of the tabloids are saying to you that um, the taxes will go up. Yes. But that's not really the truth. So indeed, VAT is going up from 5%. That's about 50% increase to 7.5%. However, there is a lot of other um, downplaying on other taxes. For example, stamp duty per transaction you pay 15 naira. Now you don't have to pay until you've done a 10,000 naira transaction, oh, oh. which means all your POS purchase that you're doing 5,000 naira. You know when they yes. and everyone started charging 15 naira. So that is only when you hit 10,000 that you start to pay. Um, for companies that are under 25 million naira, for example, 
you are tax exempt. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That is amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. So you would expect those kind of things to make the headlines. That's supposed to be just one thing. Um, the, what the big companies that pay 30% before now get to pay 20%. So if you have between 25 and 100 million, right. you pay 20%. Um, and in fact, this VAT that we're talking about, so it's good to get enlightened. What are valuable goods? It's not everything. You don't go to Mount Top to buy rice yeah. and pay and VAT on yeah. it. Yeah. No, yeah. VAT is on jewelry, shoes, bags. You go to the cinema, you pay VAT. So let's get the fact. Right. So I they're think, exempted, I, 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 okay. yeah, go ahead. Pharmaceuticals were exempted, right. educational yes, materials, yeah. public, public services. Materials. So Pharmaceutical. what we need to do, I think, we, because uh, the private sector obviously is totally against this. I mean, they are fighting this. And I think we need to have a, meet, uh, a show where we bring in various parties yes. and let us, so that Nigerians know exactly what's taxable. So exactly. don't, we, we don't and go on this. Let's find out why the private sector is so upset about this. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, moving down to daily trust. We just talked about Nigerians to pay more taxes as Buhari signs financial bill. 666,000 lost out as custom shot leaves over 162,000 applicants for aptitude test. What's that about? Okay, aptitude the test. Nigerian <laughs> custom service is recruiting. Yes. They started in oh, April, they're recruiting. Yes, oh, last right. year. So they had about um, 828. Thousand applicants, but they've shortlisted 162. And we're told last year that they just needed about 3,200 to act, finally get the job. But mm -hmm. the controller general is saying that um, the um, recruitment process has had issues because um, a lot of internet fraudsters wanted to hijack it. <laughs> but he's on top of it, making sure that uh, nobody's paying anything. So if you hear you are paying, bribing this or fake. paying this, you know it's fake. Ah, okay, yeah. we have to run off. That's our last paper for the day. Although I want to also take on my journey. The the Tribune shows the new action governor of your state, you know, looking very ready. You, know. <laughs> you know, we need some active, active governors. You are tech on today. I'm a tech I'm a tech <laughs> yes. But yeah, that's all we can take uh, on front page review. When we come back, we have quite a few topics to discuss. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So a father took to social media to report the excessive bullying of his child and how he always told her not to retaliate. But when the bullying got to, a, to an extreme point, he had to advise her to hit back. He said once anybody hits her, hit back, but never be the first to hit. Now the question is, when should we draw the line between retaliating <coughs> and self-defense? To give us your view, you can call us on 070-8066-8014. You can also tweet us at TVC Connect, this hashtag, YourViewTVC, so we can read your tweets. You know, this story has happened to somebody I know very well. Mm. He, used to, he always told, told me that his father um, called him, he, I think somebody bit him about the, I think it was about maybe eight years old or seven years old. Somebody bit him of his school. So he came home crying, <laughs> and his father was, and trying to keep him there to to um, keep him to stop crying, but mm -hmm. unfortunately he just kept crying. So the father, okay, let's go to school and find out what happened. So the next day, the father takes him to class. Told the teacher somebody beat up my son and he couldn't stop crying all night. Mm -hmm. Who beat up your son? Did that call the boy? One small chekele mm -hmm. boy <laughs> was on a beat. Father. He said that when his father saw the boy, this is the boy that beat you. Okay, don't worry. You'll meet me in the afternoon when you come home. <laughs> hey. When he came back, his father said, Ah, embarrassed him. <laughs> you disgraced hey. me. Your family name. Hey. <laughs> that small boy beat you. When next they beat you like that, you beat them back. <clears throat> and he said that was the start of his bullying days. Mm. That he used to from, from that, that that was like a psychological change he had. Immediately he knew that he was constantly had to, he had to, uh, not bully, but well, he had to constantly protect, protect himself. himself. Mm. And he did that all the way to almost university. Mm. Mm. But if not for you know, intervention of other factors, he was able to retrace his steps. But he remembered that that was a singular act mm -hmm. that changed things. So we, when, when we are asked telling our kids, but in some, in some, in some other cases, it's the flip side. Yeah, it, it is. helps, it gives you that confidence. So I like you to, I mean, I like, like yeah, you to go first. So go ahead. this story you just shared is very similar to my story. And I think I even got bullied even into the university because wow. in my tunnel level, I got bit by my, my, my roommate beat me up. Because, wow. yes. Um, and why? Her boyfriend, he was in law faculty. I was in biz admin doing masters. And every time he came, he asked about, how is Amina? And so she just, for some reasons, assumed, because she's in sciences, oh, 
they must be seen. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I, I, I got beat up <laughs> for that reason. Oh. So this bullying thing, I'm in primary school, I get beat, um, beaten and I get home and my mom will tell me, you're not my daughter. There's no way under the sun you're my daughter. So uh, when they were beating you, what were you doing? You were, were you moving back or you were enjoying the beating? Because I don't understand. Yeah. Secondary school, same thing. And, and so I think right. for me personally, it was about um, the values that they've already put in me. So I don't know where to draw the line. You've mm. told me, don't hit, don't do this, don't, don't be caught fighting. If my father catches you fighting, he will beat you, right. even yeah. if you are the one with right. the right. right. So it was okay, a struggle. Let me come to that. I think we basically have experienced almost the same thing. Because I remember coming home one day crying. That was, I think I was in GS3 at that time. And um, I go home and my father was, what happened? And I said, if a if, if, if friend beats me. And he said, you are crying. Mm -hmm. A friend beat you, you are crying. If you go back to that school tomorrow, you don't beat <laughs> that friend. Jeez. You know what I'll do to you. I said, she's big. She's bigger than me. She's older than me. He said, you don't have nails. Eh? You don't have teeth. Oh my goodness. You cannot help yourself. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That explains, you. That explains <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so I went to school the next day. I set the girl up. And oh. we got into a fight. Yes, we you got into a fight. <laughs> she still beats me. But I was under, you know, when they lift you and <laughs> land you on the boom. I felt it in my waist. I was under, but then I had worked with my hands. I teeth? worked with my teeth. By the time we were separated, the teacher didn't know who to flog. They flogged me. <laughs> because <laughs> I looked like anymore? the bully. But then I went through secondary school before that time, bullied day in, day out. Mm. You know, students will talk to you. And I was one of the youngest in my class. I was very tiny and black. So every, everybody just wanted to keep <laughs> you. And so I, I, when, when he did that for me or he helped me, I got into my own. Mm. And from that time on, Nobody was able to bully me. Eh, Obiadulu will bite you. Yeah. Obiadulu will pinch you. Uh -uh. So they avoided me and that protected me. Mm. So I got, uh, I started having kids and at the age of three, my daughter had a click in class in nursery school that everybody wanted to be Kosi's friend. Mm. If you misbehave, she says, you're not going to be my friend today. You will not sit with me today. Jesus and Christ. the kids will go home crying oh to their parents that course he saw disowned me. Your daughter has become a bully. Yes, and she was born like that because I, I don't show any form of violence in the house. So we had to go through a series of um, more like coaching with the teacher. Right. The teacher had to call me. I was teaching at that time. So I started talking to her on how to um, don't let anybody beat you. That's my own. If mm. they hit you, hit them back. No, ah. hit them back. When you grow, we cannot explain that. Oh. You don't hit okay, people. Okay. Let, Just okay. to protect wait, wait, yourself. Wait, wait. I, I, I'm not very comfortable <laughs> with that. But then we'll come back to that. Because I don't, I'm not sure violence That's is right the answer. Yeah. I don't think... I think we must be... be that, that, that was one of the reasons why we started this show. Mm -hmm. Because people must understand that we can resolve things by talking. Yeah. We can have different opinions. And we must respect okay. each other's opinion. Mm -hmm. You don't have to agree with me. So they, we have to continue to... We reinforce the importance of verbal dialogue. Yeah. Well, wasn't with violence, but let me come, let me hear your own story. Before I, okay, I, I, have, I have two stories. Yeah. My, I have a much younger brother, and I remember one time he came crying home that someone had beat him, and my mom sent him back, go and fight the person. Mm. So, of well, course, I, said, yeah. <laughs> so I, I have my children now, and um, he, my son is going, goes to school and comes back and complains like he's being bullied. Mm -hmm. And my husband says to him, You go and report to your teacher. But me, I grew up where they say, <laughs> go, and fight go and back. fight. You know, he tried to explain to me why. He says, what if he pushes the person? What if he hits that child and something happens. really happens. big happens? So I get that. But my son, I found out last year that he had been constantly bullied from primary one up mm. onto primary four. Oh, that's a problem. And especially in primary three, I noticed he was chewing his nails and then he would always complain of tummy ache, but there was never really anything right. um, wrong. Mm. You know, there was a time I was so afraid. I thought maybe he was being abused. You know, mm. I had mm. a conversation with him. I sat down with him. I even checked him. Mm. I had a conversation with the teacher. The teacher actually called me and said, what is happening? And I said, you know, I've checked at home. It's not home. So I was going to come and meet you and I think it's school. And she said she will pay attention right. and see what is happening in school. And because she paid more attention, I think, but my son never said anything to me. Mm. Mm. It was in primary four mm. that he said to me, I brought up a story. I think we had, one story came up. So, okay, Nima mm. posted a video mm. of a child being bullied in, in school. In school. Right. Like everybody ganged up on that child. So I said to him, I said, you know why this is happening to this boy? Because when were, one person was bullying him, he did not he tell his parents. Anything. Then he said, you know what, mommy? 
it's happening to me too. I'm yeah. like, you know, you don't know how sad that made me oh. because me, I felt like I convert with him. Yeah, I close him, to them. I'm close to him. I tell him everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. he could tell me anything and, you know, he, he still didn't open it. up to me. Right. So also, I now figured there's a personality type. Mm -hmm. So my son would never be the type to... Because of so the extrovert. initial suspicions I had, I put him in Taekwondo. I said, okay, even if you're not able to fight, you should be able defend to defend yourself. yourself. So yeah. it underst I understand that my son's personality is not the aggressor. He's yeah. not the type to want to hit back. Yeah. And I had a conversation with his primary four teacher, and I'm just so grateful to that woman. Mm. She had a conversation with everyone, and my son said to me, and his, his attitude towards school is much better. He's happier, he's livelier. Mm. She said, he said, my teacher had a conversation with us, and she made us pray, and in the prayer, she mentioned bullying, yeah. and she talked about how God punishes bully and bullies, and it's not happening to me wow, anymore. Fantastic. So I understand the mm. part of teaching them not to fight back. Yeah. But I, sometimes I wish my son was mm. like, yeah. mm. you know. But, but I mean, I, I, growing up, unfortunately, I wasn't bullied. Or fortunately, I wasn't mm. bullied. Again, because I was tall. Fortunately now. Mm. Fortunately. I was, I was tall. I'm a tall girl. Mm. I mean, I was probably one of the tallest in my class. And I had my, I wasn't skinny. I had a bit like of me. slightly <laughs> flesh, you know. So you can't just come out and bully me. But I got verbally abused okay. all yeah. through. Okay. I, I soaked in a lot of negative mm. abuse mm. from primary school all the way. People calling you names or, you know, you're not cool yeah they, you know, you know. Mm -hmm. so I, I understand the way that part comes so i don't know how to solve that problem but physical physical abuse we're never in that space. i was never in that space mm. so i can't i can't i can't really tell for sure if these if you tell your child mm. to it's defend himself or herself is the best approach i like to open up our phone lines to get some calls to hear people's uh, people's views on this because it's important that we share knowledge but uh, we're yeah. going to do something so um you know I, I used to feel that it's better for my kids to be the bully than to be bullied. But when I got into the teaching profession and I started studying, I realized that the bully, the bullied, and the witness all have the same negative effect. It affects mm. all of them. So even if I feel that maybe when my son is not the one who is being bullied, he's the bully, he will have more confidence, it's still going to affect him in the long run because this bullying has long-term and short-term effects. The short-term effect was what when your son was eating, yeah, there's anxiety, yeah. there's bedwetting. So you see all of these traces in the children growing up. So knowing what I know now, what I tell my kids is you can talk. You don't have to use your hands. Now go and report. If the teacher doesn't do anything, go and tell the teacher that my mommy said, if you don't do anything, I should retaliate. Oh, scare the teacher. And my son did it. The teacher had to call me that. Why did you tell your son that? I said, yes, because my son is actually very strong. He can lift it. <laughs> He's eight years and he can lift a bag of rice. Yes, that's how strong he is. Somebody that wants to be a boxer tomorrow. Let him not go and beat no, hold on. He, no, he yeah, doesn't. Hello, he doesn't. So when... <laughs> That kind of boy is in a class that he knows he can beat everybody there. And you are, somebody is hitting him and he can't do anything because mommy says it's because he's respecting you. Mm. So you, the teacher, you need to do something. Right. When someone comes to report to you that this person beats me up, you need to, you know, do something yeah. about it. Yeah. Talk to them. You have to find out what happened. Punish the person who is culpable. Yeah. Do Don't just sit there and say, okay, if you should go and sit down, go and sit down. When he now beats tomorrow, you will say my son has punched yeah. somebody and the person right. fainted. <laughs> and, and yeah, so just um, on the back of what she said, it's, it's, the truth is when you're not allowed to hit back. So even though I, I had the fear of hitting back because I'm thinking I'm not supposed to because that's the primary lessons that were taught. But then mommy knows, mommy says, you know, hit back if you've been hit because it doesn't make any sense. And along the line, um, for me, it, it became a matter of I'm available for abuse. So, mm. you know, keep abusing me because mm. I won't do anything. Um, I won't report. Right. Uh, so, it, it, so there's, so you're saying that there's a bit of sense in asking the child to defend him or herself. Uh, yes. So when yes. somebody hits you, yes, don't just like the father said in this tweet that we do. Don't be the first. At, don't be the first to hit. So yeah. don't be the bully. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're hit, Hit Protect back. yourself. However, however, however also, um, thankfully, I never hit back because sometimes you find that you have this aggravated anger. So mm. the time you do hit, it actually goes overboard. Mm. Right. Yes. And if you visit correctional facilities, you will learn patience. You will mm. know that mm. even when they are hitting you with a tool or an instrument or whatever, That's you will cool. still hold back mm. because it just it takes a split second mm. for you to land yourself in jail. There was a fight because um, I visited, I think it was Ikoi Prisons, and this man narrated his, um, he, he's been obviously bullied and everybody knows that he was the one that was right. right. Unfortunately, 
the time he decides to hit back, this person died. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Let me take no. this one. I'm, I'm told I have a call. Good morning. Are you there? Yes, I am. Thanks for calling. Go ahead, please. Okay. Um, my contribution is this. I'm calling for the first time. In Welcome. The Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. My when growing up as a child, I was taught not to hit back, not to fight. If my dad gets me fighting, it's a problem. But that made me, the first time I fought, I was beating the girl. Then the girl went back and this. Hello? Ngozi, and she beat me. Mm. Right. The line is breaking. We can't hear you properly, Ngozi. Sorry about that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I personally think um, bullying is a learned behavior and it can be unlearned. So as we, as we, um, it's, and it's something that we have to do collectively. So as I'm teaching my own children in my house to always use your words, to be compassionate to other people, to respect people, you are teaching your kids the same. You are teaching your kids the same. When they meet in that pool, we have people who understand. Share the kids. same yes, values. Yes, we share the same values. values. Because when we have parents, when we have people say, when a kid does something mm. and you're constantly hitting them, mm. you're aggressive, you're shouting yes. on them. Yes. What, you are, what, they are, what you're communicating is that when you have an issue, you have to be aggressive. Yes. Mm. So even when, I, when my kids go wrong, I try to have a conversation. Mm. Why did you do this? What happened? Mm. But it's important that parents understand that whatever we communicate is exactly what the kids... Mm. In fact, when they see you complaining and shouting and screaming mm. and throwing tent at the entire house, that is what they that's how to solve problems. Yes. I think I have another call. Oh, I have to go on a break. Um, to stay with us. What have you have a tweet? Yes, I have Please, a few tweets. So, um, Odim Kingsley says, My dad has warned me to fight anywhere and anytime, <laughs> but I should be strong to defend myself in any case. So, I grew, up, I grew up with this idea. Since my primary school, I can't remember if I found myself fighting, though prevention is better than cure. I don't okay. get that. Aditola says, The man reported in the school several times, but mm -hmm. nothing was done by oh. the school until he told her to retaliate. And when he comes back home happy, the father asked him, <laughs> to hit back. Doing that, he was beaten by a teacher. Let me take a quick call. <laughs> come back, we're going to wrap up on this. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks. So we're still on the issue of bullying. Very quickly, um, I'd like you to take a few tweets and wrap up on this. Okay. okay. So, um, well, before we take a tweet, let me just say, like, finally, for me, I feel that the teachers need to pay more attention in school mm -hmm. with bullies because I, I understand that teachers are busy, you know, making sure they do the school work. But our children spend ma uh, many hours in school. They actually spend more time in school than they do at home. And uh, in, the, uh, in the, you know, company of so many people from different backgrounds, right. you know. And I think, I don't know if they should have, I don't know if primary school have a counseling teacher. Maybe they should think about that. They need to have a place that a, teach, a, a child can go to to report things like that. Mm -hmm. Because you have, sometimes the teacher is too distracted, too busy to pay the proper attention to bullying. But we need to create yeah, something like right. that for mm. children. And then mm. I understand also we have really sensitive kids that just a little push, the whole world, we hear you, they are crying. But that's why we need someone who understands that, the psychology of a right, child, right. and it's available for the children Classic. to go to. A few tweets. Um, Billy Keys says, I still tell my children to report to the authority. I've never told them to hit back because God forbid, God forbid the other kid drops down, collapses. Though my children have the fall victims of bully, mostly they take care of themselves. Then White Lion says, why am I not surprised that BC Ubo will tear her child to fight back? I know she's a fighter by me hearing her talk. But then violence doesn't solve all. We need to use dialogue. Two wrongs never make a right. Let's preach peace and tolerance. Uncle, I'm not a fighter. I can't even <laughs> keep it. So yeah. Andrew Strato says, because I came from another nation, I was targeted because of my accent. Mm. I came home sad. My dad said, if anyone bullies you, fight back. I remember I got into a fight in school. I remembered my dad's stance and beat Birigidi <laughs> out of the classmates. Let me take this call. I'll find a call on this song. Good morning. Are you there? Hello? Oh, I'm sorry, we lost that call. Finally, yes. please. Okay. Yes. The, the, the long-term effects, there's um, a research has shown that it, there's a connection between uh, being bullied, being the bully, and being the witness with suicide and depression. It's a long-term. So a child who has gone through bullying for the uh, whole of primary school to secondary school are likely to get into things like drugs as a way of yeah. coping. Yeah. So the teachers need to open their eyes to understand that that shouldn't be an environment yeah. to even harness yeah. such. How does it affect yeah. the witness? Sorry. Mm. 
they observe, they see that the message you know, is dissected. Yes. Your brain so they see that the world is not a very calm place, and they oh, try to start. Place, yes, yeah. right. fair place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So in addition to everything that has been said, not to reinvent the wheel, it will be about parents getting more involved with the schools. Yes. Um, the PTA should function better, and then obviously the counselling units. Mm -hmm. um, we need to preach more, do away with violence. I think everyone should pay a visit to correctional facilities and hear you know, life stories of how just one second and it's all over, you are mm -hmm. behind the bars exactly. for donkey years. Mm -hmm. So please stay away from violence, it never resolves stay anything. Stay away from violence. final call. Too. Good morning, are you there? David, are you there? Thanks for calling. David, you're live. Go ahead, please. Oof. Oh. Something's wrong with that. Yeah, no, that's what's not being very So, white lion says, yes. um, white lion says, my daughter was getting verbal abuse, but we always encourage her that she's the better person and should always avoid the bully and report the matter to her teacher. Teach your child to report to her teacher about bully and not retaliate. We'll bring in an expert yeah. to discuss about verbal abuse and physical abuse in yeah. school because there's a lot of depression happening. Yeah. A lot of kids, as you said, is a learned behavior. Bullying is a learned yes. behavior. Drugs. And drugs and all that. And especially those who have been verb verbally abused. My, mine took many years. Mm -hmm. I mean, I practically... I, I, I had to rewire. I had to re do a lot of rewiring because mm. it, it entered to the, to, to the, to the core, core. To the core yeah. of me. Yeah. They, they defined who yes. I was, yes. based on yes. what I heard from primary school yes. all the oh, way no, through. Yes. So it was quite difficult to get myself from that. I've but been um, there. And it's been difficult. So, but, so we're going to bring an expert, maybe we'll bring it up another time very soon, and, and have somebody help us how to ensure children don't get into that mm -hmm. trap mm -hmm. of being bullied. Mm -hmm. That's all we can take. When we come back, we discuss a very, very important issue on medical negligence. Uh. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to your view. Thanks for staying with us. So, as Nigerians, we've heard different stories of friends and family members who have gone into hospitals for routine procedures or for minor medical conditions, and the next thing you hear, that it passed away. Sadly, this recently happened to one of our staff's brother. Um, on the show today, we have the widow of our, of our, past, our, our, our colleagues brother who's here to tell us exactly what happened but before we speak to her i'd like you to watch this clip of one of our colleagues from um, news did a did a, um, a a short documentary on it, what happened watch this it was 4 a.m on the 2nd of january just one day after the breaking of the dawn of the new year 2020 kennedy oseni akidima a 42-year-old University of Lagos graduate and a member of the Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries woke up his wife with a complaint of difficulty in breathing. He was an asthmatic patient. After calling the doctor ahead, his wife linked up with a neighbor to get him to the private hospital he sometimes used. According to her, he was put on oxygen immediately he got to the private hospital. But the oxygen finished, and that led to him being eventually moved to the General Hospital Ikorodu. At about 8.30 a.m., where the drama that eventually led to his death began. I was just saying that we are tend to him, that we are tend to him. Before I go back again, nobody's with my husband. I should go and collect God. I should go and collect food. All these things take for a while. At the end of the day. His camera shy neighbors spoke with TVC News with the one who accompanied his wife speaking first. We entered and we were shouting that please they should bring oxygen, they should bring oxygen. They were just shouting, they've called the technician to come and give him oxygen. I was like, is it the technician that will give him oxygen or the uh, what was it called? The auxiliary nurses that are there that are supposed to fix him up, or even they're supposed to be a standby doctor that will attend to emergency cases. Very nice man. Very peaceful man. I really want the government to ensure people are promptly attended to during emergencies. His widow, Victoria Akidema, a preschool teacher, now left with three kids between the ages of 10 and 4 and a widowed mother to care for, believes that if her husband was promptly and compassionately attended to, for the two hours he was at the general hospital, gasping for breath, he would have survived. Had he been there attended to us from the car, you know this is between life and death. 
How will you be telling me to go and be looking for card? Folder. Before you can save a life. With these allegations made, TVC News headed for the General Hospital Ikorodu to hear the side of the hospital's management. We met the relatives of some patients who were also complaining. As my husband is having complaint, I was telling them that this man is having complaint, he's having inching in his tummy. I was telling them that they should come and attend to him. They did not answer me. No one of them answered me. Instead of that, they were making jest of me. The chief medical director, Fumi Bankole, said she would not be able to talk to us on camera due to civil service rules that she must obey. Speaking of camera, she said investigations have begun. She also advised patients and relatives who come into the hospital at any time to take note of the hotlines to make complaints promptly if they sense any form of poor handling. I don't know. I don't but back in the home of the Akedemas, the pain from the sad loss is still very deep. These lovely children have been rendered fatherless. Their mother is a preschool teacher earning so little. One good Nigerian with potentials has gone again. The very strong reason why the government must address speedily inadequacies in the health sector. Jacqueline Ogo, TVC News, Lagos. Join us on the show is the wife of the deceased, Victoria Akedema. Welcome, madam. Yes, ma'am. Okay, obviously. So, um, this is a very difficult interview to have because um, I understand your pain and I feel your pain. Um, you see, we talk about issue of medical negligence in this country every day on this table. That's the story of our country. And until you put a face to these things, it's almost as if our leaders don't understand what we are going through on the daily. If you can, just give us a recap very quickly what happened that day leading up to the death of your husband. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. We were referred to the general hospital around the, by, at around seven o'clock or so. There was nothing like traffic on the road, so we got there immediately around uh, seven after seven, calling for help that they should please. It's an emergency case that my husband is an asthmatic patient that he needs help. Do you have help. an inhaler? Yes. He has an inhaler, but it wasn't working. Okay. Mm -hmm. So getting to the hospital, we are like shouting the, 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 the gate was locked as the emergency uh, gate. That's well, the general the, hospital or the yes, hospital? Yes, okay. the general hospital. Okay. The emergency gate was locked. Okay. I was pulling it. What time was this? Around after 7. The morning? Uh, yes, okay. to 8. Yes. I knelt down, pulling the gate. Madam, go away. I said, please, my husband is in the car. Please help me out. That is... is uh, <laughs> He needs air, he needs oxygen. Please help me out. Or they could say that we should wait. They went in to call one of their medical person. The person came out and as she was coming in, he said, no bed, nothing. Can I? I said, please, even though it's a chair, it can easily rest his back and you can give the oxygen. All it needs now is oxygen. We have tried all we could. They say hey, they should bring in the patient. The, 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 the person that helped me carry him took him in and they, they lay him on a bed that is not well supported. We have to use our hand okay. to support the, okay. the bed. Wow. What next? You said uh, you are coming. That we, what have, have, have we been looking at that it got to this stage? I was like, no, please. We have been on one treatment before, and uh, something happened. That is why we are referred down here. Please help save this life, please. My husband was like, please help me. 
all they could say that I should go and get card. I should go and get folder. I said, at this time, please do something just to help him out. All they could use is one nebulizer beside that bed. And you know, before you even put a nebulizer, there should be a substance yes. that you put. Yes, there was nothing like that. All they could do is to put <laughs> the empty nebulizer mm. on it. Okay. And they asked me, and they were like, I should go. I should go and get the folder and the card. I got the card. They still asked me to go and get the folder. I went there pleading that they should please help out. I gave them 1,000 Naira. I said they did not have change, that the folder is 500. I said, please, okay. take the 1,000 Naira and let me. Yeah, I, 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 I know this is a difficult thing to do. Um, I want us to take our steps back a bit because we know that general hospitals always complain that they bring in the patient when he's, when he's almost at the point that they can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. I'd like you to take us a step back to wh when it happened at, in, in, in your house. Yeah. We took first to a private hospital. Yeah. Did you have, a, did you have a, an inhaler in the house? Yes, yes, it was with him. So the private hospital actually started administering the oxygen. Oxygen. But unfortunately, yeah. it had finished. It's and finished. then they referred you to the general to hospital. To the general hospital. Okay, so that is what happened. Yes. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask, you know, the fact that you got there and the gate was locked, were they on strike? Is it not supposed to be running for 24 hours? I just don't know. The sure. gate was just locked, the emergency case gate, not the entrance gate. Okay, the emergency. The emergency gate was locked. And they didn't give you any reasons why? No, people were outside there shouting. The other, Even interestingly, some. Interestingly, in fact, not interestingly, sadly, mm. the young lady who was interviewed at the hospital in the video, and I'll probably show that clip again, her husband died 24 hours after. <laughs> Same thing. Mm. And she's actually related to another cameraman in, in the studio. Mm. Oh. So it was really, really a painful situation where it's so close to home. She was interviewed at, because we saw her there and uh, Jacqueline interviewed her. And she was there because of her husband. And 24 hours later, her husband also died. And this happened at the Korodu General Hospital. Now, we bring these stories to the fore because it's important that people, like, leaders know what we are going through. Mm. And obviously, I know you are hurting right now. You're mourning and you definitely want justice. Mm. And that's why we brought you on, because we demand justice. I'd like you, Mariam, to say if you, to, to, to come in at this point. I'm, I'm really sorry for your loss now. Okay. You know, there's nothing to say to her. One way or the other, one of us has experienced this a oh, relative. Just, just you know, I remember my um, late mother-in-law ended up at Luth and, you know, circumstances too. She was rushed from the private hospital because the uh, doctor there believed actually that the consultants would be better able to treat what she was, you know, what she had and the way at the general hospital. And I remember her being in the emergency, sitting in a wheelchair. She had clots and she had to have her feet elevated. So they quickly rushed her there. They knew that that was her, her situation, but they left her sitting in that wheelchair for hours. So I have heard these sort of stories many times and many times over. And, you know, apart from lamenting, what, what, what can we do? You know, the Minister for Health, the CMDs of all these um, hospitals, the doctors, the nurses. I just came back with my daughter, so I know that they put in the work. But there's a system of operation, the, 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 the administration of it. Everything is so scattered. There are various you, levels. Yes, I know. See, you go to the hospital, your child is about to do something. You have to go upstairs, downstairs, round around to yeah, get a card, yeah. to come back to... You know, everything is just scattered. The standard is horrible. But the thing is, we'll just keep talking. Somebody needs to do something. We need yeah. to help ourselves as well. I, I really yeah. don't know what to say. I mean, yeah, so... I was in the same shoe um, just last month. Um, I was on a job somewhere in the Kenya and I went into a crisis. I'm also asthmatic. And I'd used my inhaler, it didn't work. And I was rushed to the um, teaching hospital there. 
And while my, um, you know, my hosts were trying to get me, they got a wheelchair and tried to wheel me in. The doctors and other medical personnel were fighting them for, you know, taking laws into their hands by getting a wheelchair to wheel me in. And of course, they even stopped us for another 30 minutes. Get the, if you don't get a car, they won't attend to me. She's a guest here. She's not even, you know, but they insisted they had to follow the process. So I can relate totally with what okay, she just said. So we yeah. also reached out to the hospital authority. Okay. And according to them, they said they are still investigating the matter. And they asked us to call the numbers on the screen that uh, I think Jacqueline picked up those numbers and um, that we make an official complaint. But on this matter, they're still investigating. Uh, Madam Victoria, I'd like to ask you, I mean, I know you offered to come on the show. What exactly would you like the government to do to at do. this point? To say, I am left with three children. I don't know where I, I can even start from. Just to see me through, I may be the holder. Mm. My children are still small. And this, my husband is a realtor. He's the one, most He's of the thing. I'm just a preschool teacher. Right. My husband help. Now I'm left with nothing. Mm. Even my widow, my mother is a widow. So my brothers are there. Mm. Don't just don't know how they could help out. Mm. You see, this story what, is so what, close okay. to home because mm. your husband, I mean, your husband's brother works here. And even the lady in the, in the, in the other video, uh, her husband's brother also works here. So I totally, that, that's one of the reasons why we have to bring up because it's so close to home. And mm. we know how painful, um, uh, that's the woman I was talking about on the screen. So we, we were on the, th this poor lady now lost her husband. But let me take this call. I think the call's been waiting for a while. Good morning, are you there? Yes. Korodu. Yes, sir. Go ahead, please. Korodu. Yes, go ahead. You're live. Go I ahead. I sympathize with uh, a uh, woman there. May God keep her. Only God can condole people in this situation. Amen. Madam, God will keep you and help you Amen. and help your children. Amen. And help millions of others who are in this uh, situation. You see, uh, um, our hospitals are underway. I, 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 I just pray that the government will sit down and do a thorough thinking on their programs and then make these people see that when you are doing your job, you must put everything into it. You know, as if our government officials are not working, but they are overweight. If you go to these general hospitals, you will see these things. <laughs> that's, that's number one. Number two, it's not only the hospital. Our government should do more. They are doing their best, but they should do more. If you come to Kogu, for example, the roads are still bad. The roads have not started yet. They should do more. They should be up and doing. Uh, people should help. People like the richest man in Africa, if you come to this Kogu now between Ogunonke and MPA, the trailers have left Apapa and they are destroying the road. It's not only the hospital. Our government should come alive. Thank you very much, Tony. You see, just yeah. as a vegetable. I, I, I would have expected that um, the hospital would give a statement as to why they have an empty nebulizer. A hospital as be a general hospital for that matter. Yeah, that because when things happen in the private hospitals, those are the places you refer the people to because they are supposed to be the best, well the most qualified to handle such issues. So why would they equip? You know, and then we have um, uh, um, our leader saying that they, they equip the hospitals, they provide infrastructure, mm -hmm. and they have an empty nebulizer. Mm -hmm. They should be called out for it. We need to hear, get a statement on why they have an empty nebulizer in a huge hospital like that. I have a call from Morris. Morris, are you there? Yes, I am. Thanks for calling. Go ahead, please. Good morning. Good morning. You know, this uh, story that you guys are uh, um, relaying now is so sad. But fortunately, that is just the way we are. But I would like to situate it uh, at the poor view of the workers, the people who work, the medical officers, the nurses, or what have you, at the hospitals. A lot of the times, these people have, they are supposed to do what they are supposed to do. They know it, but they just refuse to do it. I had a situation last month, December. I had the access, and it was so painful. And I, I could barely walk. I went to Ifako, 
जा तो ही है तो तो रिसीव ट्रीटमेंट बहुत इवन दे सॉ दिचुएशन आई वॉज दे तो मी तो गोवा गेट कार्ड आई वेन दे आई गो दार्ड बट वो ना जैसे दे से आई गो बैक एंड गेट फोर्ट ना दे सेड आप दे हैव टू ब्रिंग माय फोर्ट दैट दे डिड इट आई वेन बैक टू द रजिस्ट्री दे से आई दे दे दो सी पीपल हैव टू कम एंड गेट देयर फोर्ट दैट देम सेड आई सो आई कैन गोइंग बैक एंड फोर्ट आई वाज टायर्ड अंटिल आई सॉ अ नंबर ऑन द वॉल एंड आई कॉल्ड द मेडिकल डायरेक्टर इट वाज देन द मार्क दिस हियर इन कॉल्ड नेटवर्क बट आस्क मी टू कम ऑफ स्टेज डिस्क्राइब हिज ऑफिस टू मी आई वेन देयर एंड आई स्पोक टू हिम द मार वाज फंटास्टिक And he sent somebody with me to them. Or it was there that eventually they brought out the folder and they took me there. It's just I just I think that it is the people, the way we uh, we are as a people. We just don't know how to empathize or right. do our job. All right. Let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue this conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to your view. Thanks for staying with us. So, unfortunately, we had to step down our guest because we know that it was a bit difficult for her to be here and emotionally hard for her. Mm -hmm. So, we had to let her go. But um, going back to the issue, um, I know that I, I, I've... You see, I'm, there are a lot of things going through my head. A caller said our doctors are overwhelmed, and we agree. Yes. They yeah. are overwhelmed. We know that. There are issues with national insurance. The issue is budgeting. There's issue with proper procedures. So, we understand that very clearly. But when do we begin to actually fix the problem? I was thinking to, I was thinking to my head that, with my head, and I was saying that when my son had an issue some years back, and we, a friend of mine had given me a number of a doctor, and I think I've shared the story before. My, my friend just gave me a number of a doctor who lives not, was, well, the hospital wasn't so far from my house. So when my son had an issue at night, I called that doctor immediately. He said, bring that child now. My son couldn't breathe. Hmm. My husband and I entered the car with our pajamas, everything. We were screaming. We held on, carried him. We got to the to the front of the street. The gate was locked. My husband jumped, carried the baby. I left the car there. We started running. As we entered the hospital, they were ready with three nurses and a doctor outside. This guy is supposed to be With the nebulizer, they were waiting for us. In the reception, <coughs> we were able to get that boy revived. Now that's because I made a phone call. Mm. Now imagine there was a phone call between that private hospital mm. and, and the teaching the, hospital. Thank you. That was sending somebody we're sending over. Somebody right now, an emergency. Be ready. Be ready. Be ready. So what's going on with the hotline? Do we have well, a hotline in our general hospitals? It's not just because you made a phone call. It's because the hospital you were going to was well equipped and ready to take you because you would have made that call and nothing would have happened. That's true. There That's is, true. I see, I've, because I've just spent like a whole week in a hospital, mm. so I saw this thing again, close, reminded me. So yes, I see the areas where they're overwhelmed. Definitely, with the doctors, yeah. nurses, though they're doing the cleaning, you can see that they need more hands. Sometimes the nurses in the hospital, especially at night, you just have maybe one or two people in a very large ward, mm -hmm. you know, at attending night, to. attending to so many people. And usually, you know, that's when most of the fatalities happen because how many, where, how many of them, how many hands, you know, you need, then you see so much waste as well. So you find an office where, where the cards are supposed to be, where you're supposed to get information, and then you see files upon files, old files, especially like where I've just went, um, youth, it's a new building, new facilities, but then you would see that the process of doing hospital business is a cake mm. or somebody is not thinking, thinking. Mm. they're not dating I, 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 the thing is the hospital is run by very intelligent people i mean to even be in that mm. business you must have gone to school you were very intelligent and yet it does not translate into the way that we run right. the let me take this call and hold it for a while good morning are you there vivian are you still there hello good morning good morning good morning, morning lady good morning so sad concerning what is happening. I sympathize with you, lady, concerning your husband. And yes, the experience we've had with our medical outlets here is different. And the reason why it's different is because the leaders do not know how it pinches us. I've had an emergency CS, not just CS, an emergency CS. So you can imagine if I had gone to a general hospital, mm. it would have been a different case. Yeah. But it was a private hospital. The general hospitals here, we need our people to, um, how will I put it? 
we need to think forward. Yes, all these things have happened, but we need to think forward on how to curb it, to reduce it. Nobody has faith in the general hospital. Meanwhile, it's called general hospital, mm. which, is, which is meant to be very, how would I put Equipped. it, very right. deep. Right. The yes. equipment, why are they not useful? Because nobody is checking and balancing. The leaders are not involved. They travel abroad. Mm. When they are ill, they do not come to these hospitals. Yeah. Thank you very much, Vivian. You know, what, what I see is um, w the problem we have with the civil service. That's the bureaucratic bottleneck is exactly what has translated into the general hospitals. Forgetting that the general hospital is a service industry. They are supposed to be there 24 hours because they are the ones who are going to be saving lives. It's not like the office where you need to pass a file and pass another file and come back today and meet this commissioner tomorrow and meet this minister for one issue. This is where they need you to work at speed. You know, and our people are not being trained. Unfortunately, we have the medical doctors who come from abroad. We have the MDAs, like you said, who come from abroad to work here. But they are forgetting the very important core of that industry, which is the people, customer service. They are not trained to be able to handle those sort of pressure. And so when they don't have any little money paid or something happens, everybody just sees that. It's that little I money not no, paid, no, though. It's no, a big issue. No, I know, you. I know. But when it's it comes cycle, to... They have yeah, to I know, everything. I know. But when it comes to saving lives, yeah. you are yeah, there right. to save those so lives. I, I hear no you. matter what your personal I don't problems think, are. This, from the story you've heard, they respond. Yes, it was a bit slow, but they responded. But they, there was no nebulizer. Nab 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 it was empty. Yes, yeah. So oh, that, that, that's, it's not so much about that they went to wait really to help. It. They're not really equipped. Yeah. So that's a, so there's a, it's a, the multiple layers of yeah. issues yeah. Yeah. beyond yeah. salary being paid, beyond the fact that some of them yeah. are not being customer centric. But the point is that they, many of them are ill equipped. Yeah. Yes, I mean, uh, and um. So basically, I thought it is a multifaceted um, problem, and so yeah. you should have a multifaceted approach. Yeah. And you've mentioned government, and then the management, and the people. Yeah. And so I'm going to talk about the patients as well. So sometimes um, part of the problem is us. So we need to also um, meet everyone else in the middle. And by patients, I mean, don't wait till the last minute. Sometimes I'm careless without my yeah. inhaler. I'm asthmatic, I should have my... So sometimes we should um, put those well, checks in place. you are asthmatic. What, yeah. what, how come your inhaler didn't work the time that you were rushing? Mm -hmm. What exactly? I, so I think I had... Um, I maybe administered it later than I should have. Okay. I probably missed the... Um, so there are timings for those things. Yeah, so there's the ones that you use pre... I mean, you prevent it. Okay. Yeah. I don't do preventive because I don't want to get used to it. So I always so um, monitor my triggers and once the trigger is there. Easy. So I think in this case, I, I got too busy with the work and I m ignored it. the, the pointers okay. yes, right. until it was full blown. And so I administered it, but it wasn't working anymore. Right. And so I had to be um, rushed on emergency. So I think for the patient's bit, maybe not in this case, not you know, in, in her case, own case, okay. however, but we've heard of cases where patients beat up the doctors yeah. and I mean, still very recently, just last week. We're, we're not going to so, end with this because we're yeah. going to, we need to hear from the doc, from the hospital side. So we'll, I know our, our, our correspondents have reached out to them. They haven't given us an official statement properly. They just said they're going to look into it. We we'll still monitor it. But I think it's important to add that many hospitals, especially general hospitals, have complained that private hospitals, okay, they yeah, send okay. them, they send them but, people that they know that there's no way. Because the private hospital that ran out of oxygen that is a is a question mark a very big question mark yes. how do you run out of stock don't you do reorder levels exactly. don't you check is that so, so, so the private the hospital itself, that you have oxygen at all no they're, no, they're both everything. both parts yeah, everybody wants it's a big deal yeah. so, so we need to mm. see this also um sort of um correlates with the emergency case yeah. when it comes to emergency the right. emergency unit yeah. emergency yeah. centers yes. we need to i mean we have a serious we have levels of problem with the health sector right. but if we can start with the emergency centers right, right. Mm. unfortunately that's that what we can take on the ship. but i think before we wrap up we don't we never do this i mean it's not something your view does but um i, I feel bad that this woman would need their help she has three lovely children left um, she's a preschool teacher. Her husband was the breadwinner, breadwinner of the family. We don't do fundraising on your, your view. We try not to do it because there's so many people that need help. Yeah, but um, if you do want to reach out to this person, please let us know and I'll be willing to link you up with her. Um, she definitely needs something to help her kick off because, yeah. yes, That'd she's nice. money right now, but yeah. three children without her husband at this moment. I think she needs help. So if you're willing to help her, let us know and we'll reach you. A call out to NGOs as well. Yes. I mean, a lot of them deal with widows. This okay. is the time to Fantastic. please come because forward so and take this up. Yes, yes NGOs can. that yes. handle Fantastic. widows. Yes. That's all we can take on the show. Oof. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Bye bye.